giving me a breakdown. Breakdown. Go for it now. Hey, everybody, this is Luke. And I'm Kurt. And welcome back to The Breakdown. You know, Luke, sometimes you hit buttons and sometimes you don't, man. But you hit the right button. I hit the right button this time. So yes, I just wanted to keep that in yes, there. Go for it now. Hey, while we are recording. Yes. The sun is slightly dimmer. Yes. Than we are used to. It is, it is very interesting. It is literally at the approximate, I don't think we timed this, but it's the approximate moment that Peak. it's like almost a yeah. full eclipse. Yes. Yes, it is. I don't know why. All I keep thinking in my head is the total eclipse of the heart. Total <laughs> eclipse of the heart. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I don't know why. I'm sorry, Luke. Uh, so, yes. No, I, I came in today and, I know. And, and Pastor Will was like, are you looking for eclipse glasses? <laughs> And I was like, no, I'm actually looking for Kurt. Yeah. And he's like, but here, let's go outside. He gave me some glasses. <laughs> I looked at it. It is pretty cool. It was probably about 60, 70%. Wow. And you're not you're not patronizing at all. You're serious, right? No, it was really- Because I thought it was really cool. It was cool. Okay. It, it, it was cool. Yeah. Um, I wasn't setting out to do it, you okay. know, to go look at it. Um, <laughs> but it's cool how that- you know, the Lord saw fit to have me walk past people with glasses. I, I so. love it. Well, like you said, you walked in and all the kids were like, you got to see it. You got to see it. I know my son bursted in. I found him. And I'm like, who? He's like, Mr. Luke. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, no, it was cool. It but, is. but in general, like I, I was happy just knowing it was happening. Yeah. Well, one of those things, you know, as you said, we're here, we're recording and, and you never know what day we're going to record. It's just any time no. leading up to the show. Mm -hmm. And we used to do the show when we first yep. started a couple years back live, Yep. you know, and a whole bunch of things happened there. So that was tons of fun. Yet we never know. No. We... <laughs> just like we never know when Jesus is going to return. This is true. Even though a lot of people are pretty sure because of this eclipse. <laughs> He's coming back tonight. Oh man! Well, or you know, tomorrow, or tomorrow. You know, <laughs> I I have to say, you're you're funny, man. This is great. I have to say that I there has been a strong sense. You know, <laughs> Jesus told us that we should discern the times. We should know the if yes. we can judge the seasons. But yeah. I love that you're having fun over here. This is great. It's, I know. Well, you got to look in that. You know, there, there's a verse about how to read the the yes. you know the sun and the moon. Yeah. So exactly to know that it's this one <laughs> but <laughs> you're funny dude it, this it is, is great fun. it's funny it I'm really just, is funny i'm just poking fun i think god gets a kick out of our well, that's it out of our discussions about yeah. oh this is what's happening this is when he's coming because yeah. of this this and this yeah um but jesus gives us signs he gives us indicators like you know following the birth pangs of of the of the world you know there's going to be wars rumors of wars earthquakes yep those sorts of things so we we are told to be on watch. Yeah. And that is supposed to mark our life. Absolutely. You know, it doesn't take much study in the New Testament to see that the apostles, they lived oh, yeah. with the expectation yes. that Jesus was returning. Yes. I mean, they pretty much acted like in their lifetime, yes. which is why the gospel was so real to them. Mm -hmm. You know, we take our time and we, we've we allowed thousands, a couple of thousands of years to make us feel a little bit more relaxed right. in our Christianity. And and, I, and Jesus hints at that in some oh, of those yeah. parables about oh, yeah. the master going away. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, well, he's been gone a long time. Yep. And, you know, that you see that theme coming up and like there's a complacency. Yes. But then he shows up. And this is, you know, I love what I was just talking with the kids and with Jennifer this morning that uh, Jesus says, if the master of the house had known which hour the thief would have come, he would not have let him enter. He would have stayed awake. And, and you know, then you go to the parable mm -hmm. of the virgins. Yes. And it's like being awake and being ready. Mm -hmm. um, it is not to be fearful because Jesus' return, oh, that that just should just stir us as the bride to say like, wow, it is what our heart longs for. Mm -hmm. You know, the writer in Revelation says, even so, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus. All these things considered, come, yeah. Yeah. Lord Jesus. And I, I believe that our heart is burning and yearning as we're getting closer. And the kids and their studies over at King's, they've been talking, a, a couple of them have been talking about the five signs that Jesus gives here in Matthew. That's to, awesome. I know, I'm, I'm like, this is great dialogue, guys. We can, we can talk now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm loving these conversations. By the way, I want to say this because this happened last night as we were going to bed on the heels of our service. So, you know, we're coming out of service on Sunday. Uh, we're dialoguing at home, enjoying a family game, trying to enjoy a family game. There's so much that comes with that. Personalities galore. There you go. It's all a refining process. It really was. It was, those were not my best moments. <laughs> not my best moments. It's supposed to be this game called Beat the Parents. And man, I was not having a good time. Lean just to say the game has been paused. The kids were beating the parents. 
It was tied. Oh, okay. All right. I think that our wow. teams were almost beating ourselves. I think that we just, we, we weren't in sync with each other. <laughs> okay. So it was just really ruthless. And I just, I was like, that's it. I'm done. I walked to, away. A lot of material to work with. A all lot right. to work with. So I love the Lord because he recovers all things. Yeah. And my point is this, we get to the end of the night and we're having dialogue about different things that took place in church and the message and all these different things. And my son asked me this question and I said, well, Noah, you know, what does, what does Samuel say to Saul when Saul, after Saul sacrifices, mm -hmm. you know, what does Samuel say? So he's like, hang on, dad, don't say a word. He flips through his Bible and uh, he couldn't find it exactly. So we settled on another translation. It was like, obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. One of the things that I thought was interesting, because um, here's my point, I am getting somewhere. One of the things I thought was interesting is to always be ready when our children are ready to talk. It sometimes mm. is the most inconvenient time, yep. like a bedtime. Yep. It's one of the things I've noticed in child rearing mm. is that it may be really inconvenient because you need them to get to bed so they can go to sleep and wake up strengthened for the morning. But they seem to pull out the most theological or yeah. doctrinal or just life questions mm -hmm. at an hour when you really need them to shut down. Yeah. And so it was just really cool to be present and available for that. So I started down this road to say, like, just to be aware like yeah. you walking through the door and like, hey, Mr. Luke, like check yeah. out these, like, <laughs> like that's the way the Lord wants yeah. us to oh, be. Absolutely. And, absolutely. And I thought it was yeah. a great kind of wink at Pastor Zach's message because it's the question. Mm -hmm. It's the question of the childlike faith right. that right. spurs on that like conversation. Right. You, you know, because <laughs> I, you know, thinking back to when I was a kid, I would have been way more into the eclipse than I am now. Yeah. But I think it's because of, you know, I have a job. I have things that I have to get done in my day. Yeah. And 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 sometimes that that routine or that mm, process mm. can take away from the joy and the wonder that these things uh, should have. Yeah, because it, it you know the next one is is going to be for a long time. Yes, it's so, so true. Which I, I kind of think like all of this is really really cool because it brings us back to and again before we get into the message, but it does bring us back to that point that Pastor Zach was communicating whether it is a physical child mm -hmm. or whether it's a child likeness with yes. a young believer. Yeah, we're all called mm -hmm. to come back to that place. In fact, I can't wait to jump in on one particular word, but we'll, we'll hold off there. But it. I want to say this. It was really awesome to be at church, um, to experience yet again another Sunday, to see kind of popping around. I was on the stage mm -hmm. the first Sunday, so you were there this week. Yep. Uh, you got to get an experience on the stage. I get to get an experience on in the, the cafe, in the concourse, yeah. on the floor. Oh, isn't it awesome? It really is. And getting to fellowship with people yes. before and after. Yes. That's fantastic. I have to say that worship was so beautiful because, you know, Luke, we're, we're so like personal with worship and we're, we all like our space, mm -hmm. right? I loved, I loved that I kept getting bumped into during worship and I'm like, yeah, this is the father, you, you know, yeah. like we, yep. we are so close. We're yep. worshiping together. We're down here. We're on the floor. And I'm like, this is great. Yep. This is great. Like, I don't, I don't need all this space. Like when, when I'm at home alone with the Lord, that's right. beautiful. Yeah. But right now we're together. Yep. My personal yep. relationship with the Lord, your personal relationship with the Lord, it brings us right here mm -hmm. to this moment. Really cool. It is really cool. So we were here, but again, just just looking, meeting Nikolai and Svetlana mm -hmm. from Moldova. You already yes. had the opportunity. Yeah, to I them, did. But I, I did. didn't. Yeah, aren't they awesome? So it was really, really I mean, special people. Beautiful couple. Beautiful couple. And they they said, you know, they just with these smiles, like mm -hmm. the smiles didn't leave their faces. No, and that is 100% them. That is genuine. I, it, it is, they are who you, who you yeah. see. That is who they are all the time with their staff. Um, at home, in ministry, everything is just this uh, childlike mm. faith and trusting that the Lord will provide. You know, we had lunch with them after. Mm. And one thing that, one sentence that they kept saying is like, we did not plan for this. Like we didn't, they didn't plan to create what, what the Lord created through them. Wow. They just said, we, we wanted to have a camp or we wanted to uh, do winter camps for kids. Mm. And then, and they would just, keep going to doors and saying, hey, could you help us with this? They wanted to go to public schools, which is not, it's it's not uh, a thing over there in yeah. the same way that over in the US, it's very secular in the schools. Um, and they were told no, but that didn't stop them. They went to another school. And then like from there, it's just kind of like, they just went, they followed the leading that the Lord put in their heart, but they didn't plan for yeah. what was going to happen. The Lord just made, you know, he does his thing. Yeah. 
And that, that is what I saw yeah. in five minutes of conversation. Yeah. I had specifically mentioned how beautiful I thought it was that they got into the public school system and they actually kind of reminded me, it was like, that, that is not common. Like yeah. that is the Lord. Mm -hmm. We didn't anticipate that. No. It was just a desire and we happened to knock on, you know, the right door after a while. Yeah. So it was really cool. Yep. But just to have them here again, to see the genuine faith, they had made a comment to me that one of the things they love about our church and, and it just, it kind of. It kind of spoke to me because we're worlds apart in culture. They said, we love this church because the pastor is young, partly because the pastor is young. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, yeah. what what a testament to, or or what it must be like in another part of the world, mm -hmm. you know, that that just seems so not maybe unheard of, but just so different that they're they're excited about it. Yeah. They're seeing young people on fire for Jesus. Yeah, amen. It amen. was it was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's also an indicator of when you're when your heart is right and, and you have that childlike faith, mm. it, it's you, you're following and we'll get to it in the yeah. message, but it's basically you're following the spirit and, and you're, you're receiving from the spirit and not from your own flesh Yeah, and you're not imposing your flesh on others because mm. you're, you're seeing the mark of the Holy spirit on things, not necessarily what it looks like. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. And that'll preach all day long. That's really, really good. So you are actually headed back to Moldova this year, aren't you? Yeah, right now I've signed up with the team. Wow. And we're going to head back in July. Okay. So we have a few youth coming with us. Yes. So, yep. So if you see any of them and, and you know, they're raising money, we're all, we are all raising money. Okay. But I, you know, I especially feel for the, for the youth. For the youth. Because like, you it's know, a it's, it's a stressful thing. Yeah. And, and, um, but yeah, like if you want to give to them, there's ways that you can give to the team on the church website. So. That's so awesome. You know, uh, coming out from the sanctuary yesterday, if we stuck around, you were able to go to what we're now calling the concourse. Yep. I actually love, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time, but I do want to say this, leaving the sanctuary and coming out, you would see um, the Mexico, yep, the Mexico station. Mexico Yep. And More all kids these camps. Going on that. Yep. All these different yep. camps. And I thought, wow, this, this is so interesting because just building wise, if I could just take a moment, building wise, oh, yeah. the Lord made provision with these inlets, these mm -hmm. little alcoves. I've always wondered, I'm like, what are we going to do with that? Why didn't we cover that with our, with our new build out mm -hmm. and look at the Lord's provision. He's like, oh, this is going to be a perfect place for all your little events and yep. promotions. And yep. I'm like, this is great. It's really cool. So to see the camps out there yeah. and the Mexico trip mm -hmm. and to hear about Moldova, it's just really cool, you know, to see what God is doing yeah. and how we're still we're still a church with all that God is doing here that still thinks about outside of who we are. Yeah, and we have to. Absolutely. You know, that's again going back to why does Jesus say I'm coming back quickly? It's like, well cuz there's work to do. You know, the harvest is the harvest is is great and ready, but the laborers are few. Yeah. And we are the laborers. We are. So let me just ask you real quick. I was out to lunch today. We are getting, what people don't know is we're actually in the message right now. We're oh, we are. It all out. We're teasing it all out. Yeah. <laughs> I was out to lunch today and one, one, the individual I was out to lunch with actually said to me, he's like, you know, I'm, I'm fired up by pastor's access regularly. The labor is plenty, but the labors are few. Obviously, quoting the words of Jesus, yeah. therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send labors. And I think what the individual was communicating to me is like, okay, I'm raising my hand. I want to be a laborer. And there's so many opportunities to get trained and jump in, mm -hmm. but whether you're going on a mission trip or whether you're going to help with camp this summer, whether you're going to serve here at yeah. the church, whatever it may be, but there is a way to put your hand to the plow. Oh yeah, absolutely. And yeah. and and when you come, I think this just kind of brings me back to reminding myself of okay, so maybe now people are coming and they're feeling like, "Oh, this is a big church." <laughs> Where do I find my place in getting involved right. with our church and, and putting my hand to the plow? Well, see, this is where there are plenty of opportunities here. Yeah. But let's even just zoom out from that. Okay. You know, Pastor Zach shared that uh, Jackie Santos had said that this church is a, a millstone. And mm. I think that's a good analogy for any Bible believing church. Is it is a millstone. Yeah. And a millstone is where the grain gets processed. Right. Now, the grain was harvested from somewhere. So if the church is the millstone, then the church is not the harvest field. Okay. In, in a sense. I like this. The, bit, the main field is out there in the world where you live, work, breathe, and, and interact with people. Yeah. And you're harvesting and you're bringing people in. Mm. Now, there's a refining process here in church, in the ministries, and, and you know, 
there is still like that harvest quality to the work that we do Correct. here, but thinking of it more as like a refining place, not simply a like, oh, I do my mission work here at church. No, yeah. your mission work is out there. Yeah. The refining is here in the millstone. You know, Luke, I really like that you're breaking that down. And and the question that I think I'm I'm posing to us here now to kind of dialogue a little bit about is, you know, maybe sometimes we feel like we we need an a deployment or a program or something to get us out there, mm-hmm. maybe together doing yep. something. And I think that, you know, we have like missions trips oh, yeah, or we those have are important. school of the spirit opportunities yes. or we have youth involvement, yes. all these different things. But there is also the point of your what you're talking about. My place of employment, my place of serving outside of these four walls, yeah. my place in the community, wherever my neighborhood, find yourself. wherever I find myself is a harvest field. And just having the sensitivity to the Holy Spirit to work that harvest, yeah. to have your hand to the plow or the sickle right there and say, okay, like, I, I I know we've said it on the show before, Jennifer and I, we always viewed every area that we've lived in as our place of ministry, mm-hmm. wherever the Lord has placed us. We, just like Joshua, every place the sole of your foot shall tread, I have mm-hmm. given you. So there's a harvest there for, for us to put the sickle in and say, okay, yes. we're going to, now there may be plowing time, mm-hmm. but we're also going to try to harvest as well. Right. So like you like you said, it doesn't just have to be right here. There doesn't necessarily need to be a way that we're deploying as an action, as a yeah. big approach. Yeah. There can be. Yep. There can be those things. Like we've talked about it before, the evangelistic thrusts yep. Yep. that take place. And that's necessary with the Absolutely. training. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think a, a part of health is being active on both ends. Great. So being... Uh, active in church mm-hmm. and, and in a greenhouse or a place of ministry. So it's, it's your refining ministry. Good. And then also following that evangelistic heart and that call that the Lord's placed on everybody. Yeah. And, and also getting involved in that. Because yeah. you want to be on both sides you do. Of, of, of the process. You really do. That's awesome. And I would say that that lands us right here at Matthew 18, where Jesus and, and Pastor Zach was picking up yesterday. I want to pause for a moment and just talk about the reality of the disciples and how the Lord knows how to deal with his people. Like, God is not afraid of our immaturity. No. I think sometimes we get afraid of our immaturity, yeah. both with ourselves oh, yeah. and with one another. Yep. Yep. And we want everybody to come to this POA, right? Mm-hmm. This point of arrival before we we can begin to trust them, mm-hmm. you know, with an implicity uh, uh, or implicitly. But the Lord is okay with this insecurity. We, we come upon this passage, Matthew 18, where the disciples are just arguing about who's going to be the greatest. Yep. You know, and I'm like, God, you're so funny that you're just like entertaining this and you're just like okay guys what are you arguing about this is not the first time oh yeah no 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 it's it keeps coming up pretty regular it keeps coming up and actually that's one of the <laughs> the hallmarks of how you know you can you can know like they're not making that this was not a yeah. made-up religion yeah. because a lot of embarrassing details <laughs> are all there are included yeah so <laughs> so here we find these disciples acting pretty normal and again i would say that the chosen has really done a remarkable job of communicating the humanity mm-hmm. Of Jesus. It's not uncommon for productions to be done with the deity of Jesus and for us to capture that, but to see the humanity of Jesus and to to remember that he is still man. Yeah. And so this is really beautiful to see here. He's like, okay, so you guys have been arguing about this, but let me show you what it actually looks like yep. to become a child. We have talked for years about, I, I want to kind of, I'm going to read this to you and then I want to break it down. And and we're in verse 3 of Matthew 18. And Jesus says, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as a little as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, one word that stuck out to me that I was saying earlier is the word converted or to convert, to turn around completely. And this is really important because Jesus does not actually tell us in preaching the gospel to convert people or in making disciples to convert people. Mm -hmm. He actually says, preach the gospel and make disciples. But the converting is actually the responsibility of us. Yeah, oh yeah. We choose. I can't make someone do that. Correct. But I love how we've talked about making converts over the years. No, 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 no. That is the Lord. That's between the Lord and them. But as far as me being concerned, I'm to make disciples and preach the gospels. However, I love that Jesus is saying, you be converted. Mm -hmm. Like you actually have to choose yes. to turn yes. and become like a child. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing that's important here, and I like that Pastor Zach made the distinction, is there is a difference between being childlike yeah, and childish. And childish. Really, really important distinction here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and and to consider how important it is that Jesus isn't isn't saying become like a a, a little child in the way of no. you know complaining or arguing. Mm-hmm. I even think it's interesting well, how they were being childish. They, that's sort of that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's perfect. I'm like yes, they're already acting childish. Yeah, but it's just such an interesting mm-hmm. play on how the master does everything, and he's like, hey, how about this kid? How yeah. about this child? Yeah. Well, and I think it's even the whole what Jesus does because right now in that discussion they are focused on the other, yeah. on each other. Yeah, yeah. And then what Jesus does by taking the child and saying, "Unless you are converted, it, it, it that whole and become and become as a child, it's driving their focus into themselves and their relationship and their, um, you know, their reality of the kingdom of God coming." into their life i know know, it's like no you need to be looking at at yourself yeah which is which is really beautiful because i i was just again taken aback by that word converted and Mm -hmm. it's like okay i can't force anybody else to be converted but jesus is actually communicating that i can be Mm -hmm. converted i can turn yeah and and he's communicating to them exactly what you're saying that the kingdom of god isn't going to look like how you're anticipating Mm -hmm. and what you're thinking so i just think that's beautiful and then we move into this place of Over the years, there's been the dialogue of, is Jesus talking about literal children? Is he talking about young believers? And again, if we're paying attention to the message, and you may have to go back and and listen, but the words of God, um, they're transcendent. The words of Jesus, they're transcendent. They may have an implicit, direct meaning, Mm -hmm. meaning, but they also have a greater meaning. And if we can catch that. So he probably was talking about both and, not either or. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's like, it's layers. Layers. That's how how I I took it. Yeah, Yeah. it's great. And it's so important to realize like, okay. Because there's a physical child there there as well. There is. But then there's also the spiritual reality of what he's saying. Yeah, and how important it is to pay attention there and to think about, you know, when we find ourselves um, in the position where we're leading children Mm -hmm. or we're imparting children, And or when we find ourselves in a position where there's young believers around, Mm -hmm. we have the same duty and responsibility. Right, right. Well, actually, like for me personally, Mm -hmm. this was a point of um, reflection, like lately, like even just, you know, because I I help at United and and I get involved with the kids and and you can see how a lot of them have questions and they ask you questions and then you get to minister to them. And one thing I've been more keenly aware of is how... It's not my role to turn them into me. Correct. So there is there is like a discipleship mm. process, and yes, mm. certain certain kids like you will I will gravitate towards, and they will gravitate towards me. But the goal is not to make them me. Yeah, it's good. the you, you become like me in as much as I follow Jesus, like yep. Paul, Paul says. says. Yep. But but because of that, because it's not about them becoming me or even being my disciple mm. it's their jesus disciple yeah there's also this freedom there where it's like wow like possessiveness it, it, it is not in the picture anymore because yeah. now it's like well if you need if you get one piece from me but then like 10 pieces from 10 other different people that's great yep so if it if if the conversation ends today and and then you the lord moves you on to somebody else that's fine yeah that's good yeah and and it creates this freedom and this atmosphere of yeah like there are certain benchmarks of what it is to to what it looks like to be a follower of jesus but it's not so much of of me making you do those things right without it's that good. relationship it's and good. it has nothing to do with me imposing my walk mm-hmm. or what i do on you yeah Oh, that's so good, Luke. And those are the lessons I wish I had learned early on as a youth pastor. Um, it's part of the reason why I tread a little bit lighter mm-hmm. now and and not walk so heavy in some areas. I mean, I know the way that the Lord brought Jennifer and I together was very much a Holy Spirit experience. And we took that as sort of like the model example for how the Lord wants to bring everybody together. And we did create some confusion among our youth group in those early mm-hmm. days. And it, it was it, it is disheartening to kind of look back and think yeah. about your story and the way the Lord has discipled you and the process by which he's brought you to all these different things may not look the same. No, as, but, but, but there's a tr- there is a truth there. there, is. And there's a, it, so it's this fine line it of is. sharing, but not imposing. So you, you, you nailed it. It is the sharing. But you know what? Pastor Zach really stretched me. You know, you and I tend to fall into the teaching uh, mm-hmm. realm yeah. and field. And so you better believe you and I are both <laughs> ears listening, you know, at the message because I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm open to yes. maybe any way oh, that I may yeah. be missing it Absolutely. as a teacher and yep. I want to be refined. Yep. And Pastor Zach brought up this great point that a good teacher, and this is what Jesus was doing, will ask 
you know, kind of responding questions. He'll answer with a question. And it really got me thinking about, okay, how am I teaching? Am I trying to lead, whether it's students at School of the Spirit or my own children or other kids or young believers, am I trying to lead them to the conclusion? Um, Am I trying to help them find the conclusion by asking the right questions? And I I really was like settling on this place of like, there are certain things that we may directively communicate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and I don't I don't think it's and and that's what's hard is people are like, yeah, but what about truth? Like, like we're not saying that everything's true and it's whatever the kid says or whoever the person it's not it's not about that. Like there is like truth is truth. Yeah. We understand that. Correct. But I can tell you the truth. And if you are wrong, like I will, I will always tell the truth, but, but there is a sense of how is that person coming to adopt the truth to their heart? Yes. And the Holy, if they are a believer, the Holy Spirit lives inside of them. So I need to cooperate where the Holy Spirit is at in their life, in their walking out of the truth. Yep. Now I'm not compromising the truth. Yeah, that's right. But we are working with where they're where you're at right now. Correct. Correct. And I think, you know, when you are walking with the Lord for a while and you're paying attention, you're attuned to the to this to the Holy Spirit, he is going to guide you in terms of what you yeah. should say yep. or what question you mm-hmm. should ask. And I was thinking about Pastor Zach's example about the elders that we have here and I'm sitting there laughing and squirming in my chair at the same time because there's not a conversation I get into or out of with our elders where they're not asking me a question and causing me to think a little bit deeper. You know, the the problem with being a young man, and it doesn't matter how old we get, the problem with being a young man is that we tend to think we know exactly what the answer is yeah. and exactly what we're doing. So to have an older, more seasoned person in the Lord come by and say, well, did you think about it this way? Right. And it re- really helps to check, yeah. you know, it's mm-hmm. awesome. It's awesome. Right. So and, I just think and, it's super helpful. And, and like the Lord is very kind in giving us like the non-negotiable things. Yes. So like, we're like, well, this is this is true regardless of how I feel about it. Yeah. But the becoming part, mm. the becoming a disciple, that is a growth process. It sure is. So that is a more, you know, nuanced and and individualized approach. And and we're we're working and growing with one another in love. Absolutely. Speaking the truth in love, as Ephesians 4 mm-hmm. says, we might grow up in all things. And so there is that the truth. In love. I like that you're bringing that up now here. There are non-negotiables. Right. There are things that we're, we're clear, we're concrete. But I've also realized too, uh, years and years ago when I was disciplining my children, um, I didn't give them any time to talk. Mm-hmm. I just jumped. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I just jumped right on the issue was instead of giving them an opportunity, like truth didn't change. The discipline no. needed to be issued, yes. but I didn't give them an opportunity to kind of flesh out where they were. Mm-hmm. So there's no room to grow. Right. There's just, they learned, they did wrong, they're going to be punished. And I think the growth point of what Jesus is saying to us here is that you have to dial it all the way back mm-hmm. and become like a child. And you have to be willing to, again, like the end of the night with my mm-hmm. son who's asking the questions, yeah. well, I'm going to double back with another question. Yep. And we're gonna, I'm going to help you discover the truth right. without just mandating mm-hmm. and speaking this. Right. Because one of the things we, we talk about, and Pastor Zach brought up some transition at King's, this upcoming year. And one of the things that we've talked about, whether it's at King's or School of the Spirit, is that learning, you know, there's a difference between education and learning. I can educate you till I'm blue in the face, but you won't learn it until you own it. Right. And it becomes your own. Right. And part of part of probing and asking a question, getting you to do the research mm-hmm. makes it your own. It builds the right. reality inside right. of you. Right, right. Well, I can think back to you know, certain classes in, in college. Too. Yeah. It's like there were certain tests. It's like, okay, I just, you know, put in the information. Yeah. Regurgitate did information. The, did it yep. for the test. Yeah. If you had me take the same test, you know, two weeks later, probably would not have done as nope. well as I did. Nope. Um, and then there were other pieces, especially with uh, like nursing, like the, the pieces that had to do with my job. It's mm. like, oh, wow. Like there's like more of an internalizing. Yes. Of what's going on it's more of a, a becoming yes not so much just a, a memorization and regurgitation yes you know so and i think that's what we're getting at that is here. what we're getting at it's a this is a becoming yes dude you know pastor zach brought up that really sad statistic about um you know young people right and like the majority of them that had been raised in christian homes and then when they got they turned 18 and and you know were became their own their own uh, adults right uh, independent individuals 
they, the vast majority of them stop going to church. Right, right. So it's like you can have conformity, mm. but conformity from the outside does not mean that there has been a becoming. Come on. Which is an internal process. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah, going to church is great. That's good. But in, in that process, there has to be a internalizing of why is this important? Mm. Is this who I am? And, and why and and what and asking those questions when you have the influence over those individuals, whether it be a child or someone in your circle of influence, that always be asking the Holy Spirit, how do I how do I cooperate with who they are becoming? Mm. Man, this is so so much associated to just child rearing. It's just, but it's so much more than that too. But my mind is just kind of shifting to child rearing yeah. and the youth pastor examples and all these different things, all these statistics. And that really is the question that I began to ask the Lord years ago and say, okay, Lord, well, how do you actually, if, if there was a way to procure, right, this child and keep them secure in the faith throughout the journey? Because, you know, I mean, when you're a youth pastor, you're praying for other people's kids, mm-hmm. you're praying for your kids coming up, and you're just so aware of you're all these statistics. Yourself. You're praying for yourself. <laughs> like, dear God, I can't screw up another kid, you know? Yeah. yeah it's tough. It's tough. And and it's like, okay, you know all the statistics and all these different things. And the Lord said to me as we started having kids and it became much more of a reality to me, the Lord really encouraged me not so much about the the rules and the rigidness right. of how we're going to govern our household, right. but keeping the children an opportunity to encounter the Lord. Mm-hmm. So we bring the children to church for multiple reasons. The first is because it's a good practice and discipline in their life. The mm-hmm. second is because it's an opportunity for them to encounter and yeah. experience the Lord. Yeah. And the third is with it, the with a group of people to see how the Lord moves among his body. Right. And so I'm not forcing anything. And there's been so many things over the years. And the reason we tend to force, whether it's child rearing or whether it's discipling others, the reason we force is actually out of fear. Mm-hmm. We're afraid that we're not going to keep that disciple right. or keep that child on right. the path rather than just walking the journey. Jesus was not afraid mm-hmm. with his disciples, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, man, there's so much chalked in, chalked up in this and it's just really cool. We haven't even gotten to the millstone part, but we're way, we're like blowing past time because I don't have earphones on today and I'm so <laughs> used to just following everything technically, yeah. but this is great. No, I think this is, this is fantastic. It was really good dialogue. Yeah. So on yeah. the millstone piece, you know, Jesus saying it would be better for you. And this is one of the things that really gets me, has always gotten me as a, as a minister, but always gets me more even as a parent is if any one of you causes one of these little ones, albeit a child and or a young disciple follower mm-hmm. of Christ to stumble, it would be better if a millstone was hung around his neck and be drowned in the midst of the sea. And I love the way that Pastor Zach kind of brought this into the reality of Jesus is not not pulling punches. He knows exactly where he is and communicating this in Capernaum and and just the the milling and all these different pieces that it's a reality to them. And I think sometimes, I mean, even bringing up to us, Luke, to say that among their elders, they were talking about how this church is a millstone. Yeah. It's either going to be a place for refining and processing, or it's going to be something that's going to drown us. Now, what I love about yeah. our culture, I'm, I'm running a mile a minute here. I'm no, sorry. Going. What I love about our culture and what God is doing is that that proves the sensitivity and the humility that still remains in the heart of our leadership is that they're not afraid to acknowledge, like the Lord clearly spoke to us. There's a way to do this right. There's a way to gaff it. Mm-hmm. And let's really seek the Lord to make sure we do it right. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it, it, and it's, it's very, it is very sobering. It's absolutely sobering. Um, and I think what can help with this process and, and not, you know, not causing someone to stumble is mm-hmm. remembering that you're also being refined too. Yeah. Um, so we're also in the millstone ourselves. Correct. So there's a humility. It's good, that man. That we have to have yeah. about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, you know, the stumbling. So like in, in one of the verses that, that comes after that, we didn't get to that in the message, but it's, Jesus goes on to say like, woe to the world and it's stumbling blocks. It's like, okay, so what, what are they stumbling? It's anything that, keeps the person from encountering the Lord. Yeah. Right? So, and I don't want to get in the way yes. of someone encountering the Lord. Yes. We, it's all, and again, this is why one of our, 
our core values that we always talk about is the presence of God. Mm-hmm. That is the hallmark. It's good, man. Because that's the refining fire is the presence of God. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be something that gets in the way of someone in, in, encountering that. Mm-hmm. And if I have the humility to know that I still need to be refined, yeah, then the probability of that happening is going to be a little bit less. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be because we are also, when we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, then we, we own up to our faults and, and we, we understand this is a process where we are doing it together. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot in what you're saying there too. And even the way that we might interpret in this passage offenses and then furthermore, later on stumbling blocks and, and the offense is not like something we bump into by accident. It's an intentional leading astray, you know? And I think it's important because there have been times this, I want to bring this up because I think there's times in all of our lives where we're doing our best and we're, whether it's with a disciple or or somebody, we're just younger in the faith and we're trying to be an example um, or it's our own kids. And we we've caused we've caused a stumbling, we've caused yeah. an offense. And I think the big hallmark, as you would say, in a situation like that is the one distinct difference is if we have the posture of humility, mm-hmm. we're not going to be afraid to take responsibility right. and to seek forgiveness mm-hmm. and say, you know what, I actually did that wrong. Yeah. I, w- I was approached recently by somebody who said, Hey, you know, um, during this season of your life, you know, when you were doing this, it it was misunderstood by this individual. It caused them to really veer off. Yeah. And it's very sobering, mm-hmm. you know, to hear that and mm-hmm. to say, wow, with my best intentions, yeah. you know, this became mm-hmm. a stumbling block. And so what do we do when we're handed something like that? I think the best thing we can do is first and foremost, seek the Lord, mm-hmm. you know, and was there any intentional and any intentionality behind yeah. trying to be an offense or, right. or trying to get like, as you would say, you know, people to look at at us mm-hmm. as the one who's standing in the way instead right. of leading Don't others to Jesus. Don't become like me, become yeah. like Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> if there's anything in me that Jesus says, yeah, that's good, take yeah. that, then then you take that. Yeah. Um, and then I think it's also just being aware that there are that there are people that have predatory ministry. Like Jesus talks about yeah. wolves in sheep's clothing. Correct. And and that's that's like the the highest form of abuse, I think. Yeah. Is to mislead people. Mm by using spiritual spiritual things for your own fleshly gain yep. and you yourself are not are not a believer. Yeah. Which, you know, not to spend too much time on there, but I think uh, I believe it's Psalm 37 that really answers that and and talks about those who are who are evil evil and still succeeding and it's yeah. only for a time. Mm-hmm. It's only for a time. The Lord is just and yeah. he will bring he all that he sees it yeah. all yeah. and he will bring it all to completion. He'll mm-hmm. reconcile everything. Um, but he knows exactly what he's doing. Um, so it's really good. Like you said, I mean, kind of a, a, a soberness that mm-hmm. comes at the tail end of this message, but I actually think it's really good. Yeah. I think it's good that that kind of hit us square between the eyes. We're caused to take pause and say, okay, Lord, you know, whether it's in my own household, right. the way I'm leading people, um, or, or whether it's in my service environment, even if it's at the cafe with the children's ministry mm-hmm. out on the concourse, um, all of it, Yeah. all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Good. Well, uh, I think it's good that we take some time, kind of pray and yeah. just trust the Lord for what he's doing through this process. Would you lead us, okay. bro? Father, thank you for uh, today. Thank you for your heart that you are always revealing to us. And Father, we pray that you would help us to cultivate that child likeness, uh, that we would run to you as children, that we would never get too big for ourselves, but always see our need for you um, and how you love us and and your grace covers our mistakes and we are all growing up in your love and with one another and so we pray for patience we pray for your insight uh, to ask the good questions and help one another become more like jesus in jesus name amen amen all right well thanks so much for joining us once again i'm kurt and i'm luke that's the breakdown we'll catch you next week oh.